how to build a good relationship with other people in school, church, and in community. Do we seek more harmonious relationship with other people in school, church, and in community? Harmonious relationships take work every one of us can get into rocky situation or circumstance and want to seek more harmony, bounding our ideas of others can begin. A terrifying task when we aren't completely sure about ourselves. As we unfold that shorty, though, we learn ways to adjust our words so they fall more gently on the ears of others. Or maybe we don't because we rather enjoy the shock reactions. Either way to maintain harmonious relationships with others is desirable. This is because this harmonious relationship will support us. We unfold our way toward perfect understanding across the years of our life. These are my ways to build a harmonious relationship to the other people in school, church, and in community that applying the values of sincerity, respect, empathy, generosity, and humility. First is by acceptance. Time does not heal everything, but acceptance will heal everything. I am uniquely the way I am, just I am uniquely to others. Accept people as they are, and when it comes to change, only change you. It's futile to try to change others. Only they can accomplish change within themselves. Second is by choosing only positive people. People inspire you or they drain you. Pick them wisely. We need to associate people who are positive, fun, and forward thinking. For me, I choose only people that will support me as I work my way upward. Negative people will only hold me down. Therefore, I don't feel good around them. I'm going to walk away and go and just be me. I will find the peace that I want in my life. The third way is by being generous when forgiving. Life is too short to wake up in the morning with regrets. So, love the people who treat you right. Forgives one who don't and believe that everything happens for a reason. People will do and say things that hurt. We don't hug these things to our heart forever. Forgive them and try to move into our own next best experience. Release the resentment and hurt. Look for the lessons and then move forward. If we spend time hating them, we won't have time to love the folks who are there now. The fourth way is by only holding on a real friends. As people grow up, they realize it becomes less important to have more friends and more important is to have real ones. There are people who aren't really interested in what is good for us. Let us go off that bunch. They didn't bring much into our life anyway. Thus, they just aren't worth our time in mourning over their being gone. They came, they left their gift, and then they left. So, did we learn a lesson from the gift? I'm hoping we learn a lot. The fifth way is by don't be a harsh judge. Judging a person does not define who they are. It defines who you are. One glance at a person doesn't tell us his full story. Therefore, we don't think we know someone after one look. Be tolerant. Also take time to listen their story as a value of respect and humility. Appreciate their 
maybe something we can learn from them. If the relationship doesn't work after we have looked, they are gently out of it. Build trust ourselves that we know when to leave and how to do it gently. The six ways is by being loyal to your real friends. True friends are not just sharing some conversation, a cup of coffee, or a funny story. But it really means sharing an honest and true part of your mind and your heart. There are always friends who are ready to party and be the entertainers in our life. The person who stays and helps me carry out the emptiness is my real friend and deserves my loyalty, sincerity, and support. Real friends deserve my support just as they also support to me. The seven ways is being tolerant, kind, and respectful. Respect for ourselves guides our morals. Respect for others guides our manners. If I decide in my mind that I will treat everyone with tolerance, kindness, and respect, then I will feel fabulous regardless of how others treat me. My decision will keep in harmony out of judgment and will be noticed by others. People will want us to be in a relationship with them. The eight ways is by looking for the good, love, and praise it. Those who look for the good in others will naturally bring out the good in themselves. For me, it takes discipline and a conscious choice to look for what is good in others, and when I give what I've seen a voice, I can easily take myself out of selfishness into a realm of genuine caring and concern for others. But when you do this for yourself, you can do it more quietly. Who knows, maybe they'll pick up on it and start praising you. For me also, to love is to give unselfishly. God created us with love and He instructed us to love Him and His creation. Love is our soul's calling. Our destiny is to be loving, emulating the qualities of God. Love is nurturing and healing, simulating emotional, spiritual, physical growth and development. And those are my ways how to build a harmonious relationship with other people in school, church, community by applying the values in sincerity, respect, empathy, generosity, and humility.